Well, I'll tell you this. It was a dramatic morning in parts of Gauteng. A magnitude 5.0 quake hit the province at 2.38 a.m. People woke to heavy shaking and rumbling with some damage reported on the East Rand. The U.S. Geological Survey says it struck about 10 kilometers below the surface. It places the epicenter around Katlehong on the East Rand. Let's now talk to Willem Menkis from the Council for Geoscience. Willem, thank you so much. A very good morning to you. Perhaps let's confirm first. For those of us that woke up at 2.38 a.m. to war, trembling and dogs barking. It was just a little bit of havoc at that early hour. Was it indeed an earthquake or was it what we'd call an earth tremor? Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning, Faith, and, and good morning to all the viewers. Uh, yes, so from the Council for Geoscience, we can confirm that uh, it was an earthquake that, uh, that happened this morning at uh, just before um, 3 o'clock, so at uh, 2.38, as you correctly indicated as well. Uh, so we've got a local network deployed uh, to monitor seismicity uh, in, in the uh, Johannesburg regions as well as across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and based on our information, uh, we've located the earthquake also in the Germiston uh, Tokosa region. Um, and we've registered it as a, a magnitude 4.4 uh, 4 .4 on our local magnitude scale that, that, we, that we do use. So indeed, it did happen. Uh, and and uh, reportedly, it was felt also quite widely, uh, even in in the Pretoria region and and across Gauteng. Willem, do you know what caused the earthquake? So, Faith, at this point in time, we are still uh, looking into uh, the causes of the earthquake, and and um, uh, we'd be following this with uh, additional analysis of the the data that was collected. Uh, we do know that some of the regions in, in the East Rand and the West Rand as well do experience seismicity uh, as a result of mining activities. Um, I think I'm being load shedded. <laughs> uh, but okay. um, we do, uh, we, 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 at this point in time, we are, uh, we are still assessing the, uh, the causes of the, um, of the seismicity and what could be the most probable cause. Yeah, because it was quite uh, widespread, this one, um, and more than anything else, at 4.4, we could all um, actually feel it. Now, let's talk a little bit. Once we've actually experienced an earthquake, and as you were saying, it's about 4.4 um, in terms of magnitude on the Richter scale, what happens then? Is there an aftershock that happens, and, and what does the aftershock actually mean? Should we be anticipating more tremors? Was this the last of it that we've experienced this morning? So most of these seismic events, uh, faith, they are quite uh, unique in their nature from one to another. Uh, we cannot uh, with definite certainty confirm that there would be aftershocks or not. Uh, we've seen in the past from relatively larger earthquakes that uh, they tend to do generate some aftershocks. Uh, and this is mainly as a result of, uh, you know, uh, underground stress buildup uh, that, that could or could not get released. Uh, so I think to be prudent at this point in time, we can uh, probably anticipate some level of, uh, of uh, tremors that could follow this one, uh, although it, it, it might not necessarily be the case. Okay, but then does that mean that as a country we want to anticipate more earthquakes along the way? Look, I grew up in a time, um, Willem, that you and I would never have a conversation about an earthquake of this magnitude being hit in South Africa. It will never be. It would often be described as a tremor, and it would either be a tremor that was felt way off or under the water and the like, but it would never be one where we wake up in the morning feeling literally the earth shake. So is this the last of it, or are we then to anticipate this kind of natural disaster happening quite frequently from here on out? <clears throat> Look, um, Faith, we, we, we cannot predict the occurrences of earthquakes, uh, but what we had seen uh, in the recent past, and I, I think to, a, to some extent it's because of our monitoring capabilities um, uh, that had Im improved over the, the recent uh, years, so uh, probably the last 20, 15 years or so. Um, but we do see in some regions uh, some increased in, uh, increases in seismicity. Uh, you'd recall the earthquakes of around uh, 2015 uh, in the Orkney region, uh, which is sort of similar in size to this one as well. Uh, so we do see these uh, recurrent, uh, relatively larger uh, earthquake events, uh, especially uh, in our uh, West Rand and Far West Rand regions. Uh, there are some other areas in the country as well. Um, but uh, at this point in time, I, I can maybe... Um, 
indicate that we'll have to, um, at least in the near uh, rest of this day or days to come, just be uh, prudent. Um, I, I suppose the disaster management uh, functions would also be uh, deployed in terms of assessing some of the um, uh, some of the damages and occurrences uh, that that was reported from the uh, events this this morning. And Willem, that was going to be my next question to you, and I want to labour on it for a second here because, as I said, there are certain natural disasters that in the past would have been something that is not even within the consciousness of South Africans, right? So earthquakes that are felt at this tremor, um, I mean tornadoes and and you know cyclones and the like. This is not within our framework of understanding in the southern tip of, of, of Africa. However, now this is the reality we are contending with. As such, you know, as professionals, as experts who track the way in which natural disasters work, would you advise government at this particular stage to start making plans in the eventu in the, for the eventuality of a natural disaster such as an earthquake? I tell you, our houses, I don't know if they're built to actually you know, withstand earthquakes. We don't even know what to do when an earthquake hits. Do we go under the table? Do we just sit on the bed? That's why most of us want social media trying to understand exactly what has just happened to us. So from an expert perspective, would you advise government to start making those contingency plans so that they are ahead of the curve and we don't find ourselves wanting, especially in the not so distant future should something like this happen again yes no absolutely that that's uh, that's definitely the way to go faith but i i wouldn't say that there's uh, there's nothing uh, that's in place so we do have our national building standards and building codes uh, so they do take seismicity uh, of the country and our uh, unique situation into account uh, that do uh, put on the, in terms of the uh, engineering design and construction requirements uh, some additional measures that has to be taken at least to cater for the level of seismicity that we do experience in South Africa. However, uh, as time goes on, you know, some of these events uh, only occur infrequently, so they are not on a very regular basis. Mm. Uh, so in that sense, we constantly, as new um, seismic events or earthquakes happen, uh, we do update the uh, the understanding and the analysis of seismicity in South Africa uh, that is then again uh, informed back into our um, our building regulations and and design codes uh, yeah. but it had definitely been something that that we've seen uh, on the increase you know to constantly do that analysis and those updates um, to to our um, understanding of natural hazards in South Africa. Uh, as you correctly say, we've we've known about seismicity for some time, uh, even as way back, uh, far back as the early 1900s, uh, there were reports of, of quite large earthquakes happening in South Africa. So it's not a it's not a new thing, but it is an infrequent thing, especially once you uh, start seeing um, earthquakes of larger magnitudes or events. Um, smaller scale seismicity, it's, we, we get it very frequently in South Africa on a daily, daily basis, in fact. Um, but generally, that is not perceivable. It's, it's really minute uh, tremors, as you would prefer to them as well. Perhaps let's just also explain the, the ramifications for those that are on the coastal sides um, of things. Willem, and, and maybe because it's either we either watch too much television or too many documentaries, <laughs> what usually follows after an earthquake is some kind of high waves, from what I understand, along the coastlines. But would that be a likelihood in the South African context? I mean, how would we experience waves of a high magnitude? I think it was uh, the tsunami that hit was, was, was actually preceded by some kind of, of an earthquake just before. So what is the correlation between earthquakes as well as higher wave um, experiences? So, so faith in this regard, specifically for the earthquake that happened in the uh, Johannesburg region, um, we don't expect any uh, tsunami uh, waves being generated by that earthquake. Uh, typically, when we have uh, earthquakes that happens offshore in the oceans, uh, they do have the capability of generating uh, tsunami waves uh, at, different, at different levels. Um, and I know the, um, uh, it's called the East Indian uh, Tsunami uh, Awareness. Um, there's, there's a monitoring network that's set up to monitor seismicity and, and a lot of the countries that are affected by potentially tsunamis in that areas do monitor uh, the occurrences of, uh, of offshore earthquakes as well and their uh, possibility to generate tsunamis. Uh, but in the sense of the Johannesburg uh, region earthquake of this morning, uh, we do not expect uh, that to have been contributing to uh, waves, uh, tsunami waves being generated. 
But Willem, you warned that we should be just aware because we could experience an aftershock. Yes, I think it, it's, it's, uh, it's good to remain prudent and vigilant. Uh, we cannot exclude the occurrences of aftershocks. Uh, earthquakes are, like I mentioned, in their inherent nature, complicated and unique one to, to the other. Uh, but at this point, I think it would be um, uh, best to remain prudent and uh, we might expect some uh, follow-up tremors. Um, and um, uh, yes, that, that, would, that would be my advice at this point in time, since we cannot uh, conclusively uh, you know, rule it out at this point.